I love my parents deeply. They're here visiting for my son's birthday. So I don't want to, you know, they did what, what they were told was right. And my mom says, in Good Housekeeping magazine, they told her to use those frozen meals. Do you remember that? Like, she was going to be a better mom if she used those. But at the age of 16, I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me that I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's basically, it is a diabetes that affects female fertility. So I hear all the time, oh, females need carbs for hormone health. Well, I'm telling you different that excess carbohydrates caused my infertility because carbohydrates and caffeine causes excess androgens. And we want some, but in excess, you basically end up with a diabetes that is causing for infertility. Um, I also was told I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. I also had severe depression and um, anxiety. The doctor said that there was nothing I was doing wrong. It was just the cards I was dealt. Right? Um, I know that it was fate that sent me to the vet that very same week. Um, I had a beautiful golden retriever that was losing patches of her hair. And guess what the first question the vet asked me? What are you feeding her? And we went home and we changed her diet and guess what? Her hair grew back. And guess what? I changed my diet and I didn't lose weight right away. I know everybody's like, oh, you're like a little skinny person. What do you know what you're talking about, right? But I was. I was um, almost twice my size. And at my height, <laughs> that just wasn't right. Um, I didn't lose weight right away, but immediately the depression lifted. You know, people venture into the ketogenic lifestyle because they think it's great for weight loss. But guess what? My kids are 8 and 10 now, officially, and they know nothing else. This is what they eat. Do they need to lose weight? No, they absolutely do not. I don't need to lose weight, but I am sticking to this diet because it's good for so many reasons. So many reasons. It's not just about weight loss. There's one client I had. Um, she was 90 pounds and had severe colitis. Severe. We changed her diet, and it might be quite a bit different than what you read online. There was no bulletproof coffee, there was no fat bombs, there was no actually any dairy in her diet that I made for her. She is now lifting weights, running, she is a healthy 120 pounds. It wasn't about weight loss for her, it was about healing her gut, right? Food can be medicine, or it can be poison. It really can. And there's so many benefits to eating the ketogenic lifestyle. Um, what's interesting is I went to college for nutrition and exercise physiology. But I fell in love at the young age of 17 to Craig. Some of you know him. And all I wanted to do was be a mom. And he said, OK, let's adopt a bunch of kids. I was like, all right, that's great. And when I graduated college, I was a rock climbing guide. And I was just waiting to be a mom. We started the adoption process, and he lost his job. And I didn't have insurance with a rock climbing job. And if you know anything, if you lose insurance with the adoption, um, everything stops. And you lose all the money you put into it. So not only did we lose our house and our cars, we also lost the children that we wanted to adopt. And uh, I remember my mom saying, your babies weren't born yet, Maria. And um, like Glenn said, I love your pictures of all my social media posts. It's always about my kids because they're really special to me. Um, but when we, I was at that really low time in my life, I didn't want to wake up. And um, someone in town in Hudson said, Maria, you're going to write a cookbook to help raise money for your adoption. That's where it all started. It gave me a reason to wake up because I was really passionate about making recipes and helping people, but I was just kind of doing it as a fun thing um, on the side. 
I didn't even like pursue um, a career in nutrition after I graduated until I put them all together for a cookbook. And it went gangbusters. I think everybody in Hudson bought one. Someone said, put it on Amazon. So we're like, okay, we put a barcode on it, put it on Amazon, and it went gangbusters. And uh, that's what brought us our children. And uh, I remember someone saying, you know, everything happens for a reason when I was really at my low point and I wanted to punch him in the face. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh my goodness, I am so grateful for that low time because it made me struggle and work harder. And I became really passionate about helping other people. So if you've been on the ketogenic journey for a while, this is a tip. You know Alcoholics Anonymous, right? You know why they're so successful? It's because once you are on a sober path, once you're on the keto path, you become a sponsor to somebody else. And you have a reason to stay on the path. And so if that's what you need, if you need to find someone to like encourage, whether it be on social media, social media has been so great for keto, good and bad, but you can make so many friends online, good ones, there's good groups out there, and they encourage people, um, hey, I tried this recipe, and I don't even mind, on my groups, if someone's like, I tried this recipe, not, not my thing, not my jam, that's okay. You know, because we all, that's why I'm writing so many recipes, because I want you to find what you love. I don't like salmon, but I'm going to write recipes for salmon, because guess what? That's my kids' favorite food, you know? My kids are from Ethiopia, and they came to us when they already had kind of a palate forming. So I tried to make what they were eating in Ethiopia just a little bit different and put it on the plate. Try to make it as familiar as possible for them because they went through so many changes. I mean, man, the first time they were in the bathtub, they cried for hours, you know, because um, they just they didn't have that there. You know, there was days that we didn't have any water while we were staying there. But um, what I'm trying to say, I'm going off on a tangent, but um, try to find things that you really love. Think about what you really like, and then just make it a little bit different. Just. If you search that Maria Mind Body Health, whatever you like, whether it be creme brulee, I think it's National Creme Brulee Day tomorrow. <laughs> we kind of like to follow food holidays and make them a little fun. Um, and what you do is search creme brulee. There is a creme brulee recipe on there. My husband likes it for his birthday, which is Christmas Day. Um, and, you know, I'll make that. And then um, I don't feel deprived. And that's what kept me on the diet. Some people criticize me for, why do you even allow sweeteners on the ketogenic diet? Well, because I live in the USA. <laughs> and I'm bombarded by food pushers everywhere. I just wrote about that on my blog, the five ways to like, be kind to food pushers. One of them was I lied, because even my mom, she would like make my favorite pie because she knew I was trying to change my diet. And she was meaning well, but we show people, even I find myself doing this. I made a birthday cake for my son, and I want him to like it. If he didn't, I would be hurt. That's not about him, it's about me, right? <laughs> and you have to realize that. If there's a food pusher on you, it's not about you, it's about them, right? Um, but you have to be strong mentally when people start pushing food on you. When you go to restaurants, if you're new to the keto diet, you kind of have to mentally tell yourself, I'm not going to get the french fries. I'm not going to get the french fries. Look at the menu online. That's what's nice about now. You can go check out the menu online. I'm going to get this. Be a stubborn German girl like myself. And you can do it. But if you do need support, there's a lot of different experts here that have a lot of different online support systems, including myself, Dr. Westman. You just have to find a group that you connect with and find people to support you.